coming up. Uh, based on your yes or no's, you have about $20 million here of, of companies that you had investments Votre in while you were on the board. Votre chiffre de 20 millions est faux, M. Perkins. Putting aside issues of conflicts of interest, gross mismanagement while you sat on the board. Do you take responsibility for that? Some received $10 million alone, alone, from SDTC while you were on the board. Ten million just in one company. Now I will ask again. No, it's not a. It's not. Michael, no, no, you don't sorry, get to interrupt sorry, me. Sorry, sorry, you don't get sorry. to interrupt me. Do you not sense that perhaps Canadians sitting at home are going to be enraged over this issue? Four hundred million dollars, taxpayers' money, while they're at food banks, going to connected insiders. Ms. Mateau, you have tabled with this committee a number of documents that we haven't had the opportunity to review that appear to contradict aspects of the findings of the Auditor General's report. Will you agree to, in addition to tabling those documents with this committee, to also turn those documents over to the RCMP? If the RCMP wants documents from André Lismetot, I know they can just get a search warrant very quickly if they feel so. In 2017, you made an investment with a Chinese state-owned enterprise. They're an investor with you, and you have an office in China. Are you following the Chinese National Security Act that requires those who operate in China to spy and steal technology? Point of order, Mr. Chair. As yes, much <laughs> as I, I, I have no idea what the heck the, that has to do with uh, SDTC. This guy's garage. Uh, our witness, but I received a, a notice uh, last week that there was a conflict. I endeavored to find out uh, what the conflict was. It was medical in nature. Uh, it was not. Uh, I instructed the witness to be here since the witness had confirmed she would be here at 11 o'clock uh, and I am expecting her perhaps by noon at which point we will take things up again. Until then, this meeting is suspended. Alors, Madame Etaud, uh, you... Ms. Mito. Remarks, uh, the floor is yours. I, I do understand, I just, I'll, I'll mention this now, you sent in some documents, you might reference those to members, those will be sent around, I hope, later today, as they are just being, uh, in one case, being translated and the translation is being verified. So these documents will be sent to you, I hope, by the end of the day. Shh. Mr. Perkins, you're leading us off, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you. Uh, Madame Matot, Matot is how the correct pronunciation. Is that true? Hello. I'm just asking you the correct pronunciation. It's Matot? Matot, oui, c'est ça, Mr. Perkins. Ça va, Mr. Perkins. Merci. That's fine, Mr. Perkins. The cycle capital on shares in Ekerm, Alberta Biofuels. Pouvez-vous reprendre? Could you please repeat the question? I didn't understand. I'm going to go through a list of companies. I'd like you to confirm whether or not Cycle Capital, any of your funds, has uh, made investments in them. N. Erkerm, Alberta Biofuels, E N E K E K R E M. Do you have an investment in that? Yes or no? Uh, I'll, uh, N. Erkerm, N. Care. Alberta Biofuels is a, a company. We are an. In le, ben la réponse est non direct. Well, the answer is no, not directly. We do not invest directly in them. It, uh, they're listed on your website, $12 million. MindSense Technologies, you've admitted here, you had uh, investments in, correct? Nous détenons moins de 10%. We have less than 10% interest in uh, MindSense. Bush Fund. How about. Uh, Spark Microsystems. Dans le cas de Spark, in the case of Spark Microsystems, I was not on, or when I was a member of the board, we weren't an investor. We only became an investor years later. Vous êtes un investisseur. On va répondre. Uh, sorry, I will give you a clear answer. Our investment uh, began after I was a member, a board member. Uh, Concentric Agriculture Inc. 
We do some of this. Yes, we are an investor in Concentric. $2.6 million they got from the slush fund. Uh, Police de Vert. J'aimerais, j'aimerais, j'aimerais clarifier. Ch- I'd just like to clarify something, if that's possible. Mr. Chair, is that possible? Well, it's Mr. Perkins' time, so if he allows you to respond, yes. Mr. Perkins, do you let me? Go ahead. We're looking for yes or no. Do you own, does Cycle Capital own any ownership of Poly Stavert, Inc.? Wait, some yes. We are investors. Million dollars from the slush fund. View real. Nous n'étions pas investisseurs. We were not investors when I was on the board. Are you an investor now? Oui, investissement s'est fait en deux. Yes, in 2022, sorry, 2022, uh, we became, uh, we invested and then I had not been on the board for at least a year. So you fuel? No. 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 Crystallis Labs? No. Borealis Wind? No. These are the ones I think that were listed by the Auditor General you non, referenced earlier. Non. En fait, euh, um, dans global, le tableau que j'ai remis que vous n'avez pas reçu, monsieur. In the table I gave you that you didn't receive? Est-ce que je peux I'm just double checking the General's list. C'est ce qui était. Alors, alors, c'est Mr. Perkins qui a la. It's Mr. Perkins who has the floor currently. He will be asking you questions. Now, what often happens is that if you want to say something, it's it's quite likely that another member here may ask you questions that you will be able to include your answer in, but that's how it works. However, Mr. Perkins is the one who has the floor right now. I'll ask again. Uh, Crystal Labs. No. Crystal Labs. No. Uh, Borealis Wind. No. No. Equisphere. No. Uh, global spatial technology. No. Uh, fractal systems. No. GHG Sat. No. Green Mantra. Oui. Yes. Helen Inc. No. Uh, Hortu. No. Uh, Meta Materials. No. You're not an investor in Meta Materials. No. Never have been. Never have been. Peak power. No. So why are all these listed as conflicts of interest by the Auditor General? Merci beaucoup pour votre question. Well, thank you for the question. Here is how I proceeded during those years. I declared potential conflicts and, and real conflicts. So any time there was a meeting of the board, we would be given a list. If we were analyzing a file, I would declare potential interests of conflict, but usually an analysis takes about eight up to 15 weeks, depending on the cases at hand. But during these COVID relief measures, we decided that we wouldn't invest in these committees, and and at times for years, we, so we weren't investing in those companies. And in fact, the Auditor General was very clear at the time in her report. And I'll try to quote her here. She said, during those two votes, in 63 cases, the members of the board had voted, even though they might have potential, d- declared a potential conflict of interest. But in two-thirds of the cases, there were not conflicts of interest. And that was my case. So out of the 23 companies... Thank you. Are you an investor in Terramera? No. Uh, advanced Intelligence Solicitors? No. Seminos? No. Pyrowave? No. Okay. So you do have a number here that where you received and the companies you invested in received at least 10 to $20 million of green slush fund money while you were on the board. I'm sorry, I, I d- didn't really understand what you were saying. Can you repeat? So between the yeses and noes, there were a number of yeses here, and of those yeses, it adds up to about $20 million, I believe, of, of SDTC money that went wa- to those companies while you were on the board. Is that correct? 
Pendant mon mandat, during my term, my tenure, we looked at about 250 files over the five years I was there. Four businesses through programs during which I declared my, in, my interests or investments and I recused myself. So there was $10.4 million and we were... Based on what? The, the confirmation you had earlier. I'm not asking for a conflict of interest think... explanation of how the board operated. I'm asking for, um, based on your yes or no's, you have about $20 million here of, of companies that you had investments Votre in while you were on the board. Votre chiffre de 20 million est faux, Monsieur Perkins. Votre chiffre de 20 million est faux. Je vous demanderai d'écouter ma réponse. Is uh, incorrect. The number is incorrect. Uh, to you, I'm sure, Mr. Perkins. Next, we have Ms. Yip. You have the floor. Uh, thank you for coming today again and for providing document, uh, documents ahead of time. That's much appreciated. Um, is there any testimony or clarification from, your, um, from the previous questions that you would like to add or clarify? Oui, j'aimerais dire... Yes. I'd like to say that some members of this committee have made allegations that are false and that are verifiable. For example... It was said that I had funded uh, Ms. Vesheran's uh, projects. I wasn't even involved in any of those projects. And as a matter of fact, I sent a memo that showed that I was absent that day. So that's one example of something that is false. It was also said that Stephen Guilbeault was, uh, was a major shareholder when he had no shares in Cycle Capital. So in fact, there's an attempt to throw all these sums together that were numbers that were correct over the years, but the numbers that have been added up are false. I have always recused myself. I was always declared my interests. And as Mr. Perkins has showed, there were potential conflicts of interest, but there weren't actually conflicts of interest. And despite that, I always was absolutely honest and absolutely clear in terms of my interests. So that is what I want to add. Uh, beginning our second round, um, uh, times will vary. Mr. Cooper, you have the floor for five minutes, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Mateau, you served on the board of SDTC from 2016 to 2021, correct? 21 juin 2016 au 14 21st of June 2016 to the 14th of September 2021 released a report that covered much of a time that you sat on the board you said that there was nothing contained in the auditor general's report that implicated you in any way but you have to know, as a member of the board, that that isn't true. The report of the Auditor General was a damning indictment of conflict, corruption, and mismanagement of SDTC while you sat on the board. Isn't that the case? Well, there, uh, there was no blame laid. It's a damning, damning indictment, including $59 million of taxpayer money that improperly went out the door, putting aside issues of conflicts of interest. Gross mismanagement while you sat on the board. Do you take responsibility for that? Je n'ai pas à prendre toute la... No, I'm, I'm not going to take all responsibility for that. ...for the fact that you sat on the board as 59 million taxpayer dollars improperly went out the door in non-compliance with the very agreement SDTC had with Industry Canada. You take no responsibility. Is that what you're saying? Just avec la liste sur le COVID. Well, just on this list, this COVID list, uh, and, and the 21, 21 companies that were listed, I think that greatest respect, with greatest respect, I'm not talking about the COVID relief payments only. I'm talking about $59 million. That's beyond just the COVID payments. Tens of millions more that improperly went out the door. And I'm just asking you, do you take responsibility for that as a member of the board? 
I, get, I contributed to the best of my abilities as a member of the board, as all members of the board did. Take no responsibility for the mismanagement. Um, it's telling. Um, what interest, if anything, uh, do you or Cycle Capital have with MindSyn Biochemistry? At the time of the vote, is that what you're asking? Well, our stake in mind sense, if I look at it, my personal stake is 0.03%. And we're and we are an investor at 8.7% in mind sense. Did I answer correct answer you? Biochemistry. No, MindSense Technology. Oh. No, MindSense Technology. Sense biochemistry, what interest do you or Cycle Capital have in that entity? Je ne connais pas MindSense Bio. Well, I'm not familiar with MindSense Bio I, I only know MindSense Technologies. Provide some context because uh, the Auditor General identified the uh, COVID payments that you uh, ha had money, monies were funneled into certain companies that you had an interest in, and you've clarified which of those companies you or Cycle Capital had an, a specific interest in at the time. But there's a, another item, uh, number 18 on the list that provide, was provided by uh, the Auditor General, in which uh, she lists you as having some sort of conflict with respect to MindSense Biochemistry, in which MindSense Biochemistry received $2 million from SDTC. Okay, M Monsieur Cooper, on va régler quelque chose. Oh, Mr. Cooper, allow me please to clarify something. I want to make sure we're talking about the same company. MindSense Technology is not the same as MindSense Biochimie. So, MindSense is a data company involved in uh, mine waste. So, I, so I'm going to answer you anyway, but I'll but I'll speak to MindSense. I, we're not talking about the same company, though. It is very limited, and I just want clarity as to whether you oh. had an interest, Recycle Capital had an interest in MindSets biochemistry. At the time that it aucun intérêt dans MindSense Biochemistry. I have no stake or interest in BioSense uh, Chem. No. Technology. Merci beaucoup. Uh, the Thank you very much. Time is up. Questions. Is there anything from that previous round there that you want to clarify or expand on? Any of your answers that you maybe didn't have a chance to answer fully? Oui, j'aimerais. <laughs> yes. I'd just like to help Mr. Cooper out. Uh, I, perhaps it was miscommunicated or miswritten. So we, I personally, have a stake of 0.03% in MindSense. And we have 50 investors uh, throughout America, Canada, the United States. There are private investors. There are institutional investors. We've gone through various processes to get these funds. Sometimes there have even been competitions. And collectively, these investors hold, in MindSense technology, a stake of 8.7%, and my own stake is 0.03%. So I want that to be absolutely clear. So yes, there is an interest, because when you have 8.7 of a business, you have to declare a conflict of interest. You recuse yourself, and that's what I've always done. So, Mr. Cooper, I'm telling you this. MindSense technology is uh, has extraordinary technology. It's changing the face of mining It'll be providing uh, so many changes, favorable changes within CO2 emissions, etc. And and I'm hoping they'll be they'll be able, they'll be on all the global markets. And I hope that will help position Canada when it comes to mining and ecological mining. Uh, Suivant, up next, Mr. Perkins again for five minutes, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, based on your testimony here today. Uh, you have uh, companies that, that Cycle Capital invested in, which 
the year partial, if not full owner of Cycle Capital, have received over $30 million of investments from SDTC while you were on the board. You are the biggest single beneficiary of, of the SDTC uh, uh, money while sitting on the board. Now, you're aware that the SDTC Act, which applied to you, says that board members cannot themselves benefit, nor can they, their family members benefit. So your companies received more than $30 million while you were on the board. Isn't that a benefit contrary to the SDTC Act? Well, what you're saying is false. Out of 250 miles of files that were analyzed when I was a member of the board over those five years, four companies from Cycle Capital received 10.4 million. Four companies for which I declared my stake, I followed this governance protocol, I recused myself from the discussions, and I had... ...received $10 million alone, alone, from SDTC while you were on the board. Ten million, just in one company. Now I will ask again. No, it's not a. It's not. No, no, you don't get to interrupt me. Sorry, sorry, sorry you don't get to interrupt me. Order, you don't get order, to interrupt order, me. order, order, order. We we really cannot have people speaking. Over. You don't get to oh, order, 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 Mr. Perkins, Madame Metad Souple. You will have an opportunity to answer once he has asked his question, and I am certain that if you don't get an opportunity, another member will allow you to respond. I'm, I'm sorry, but that's how things work here. Mr. It's per Mr. Perkins' time, and he's the one who will ask his questions. So you are here to respond to the questions that are put from the members. And to date, things have been going uh, well. There have been a couple of times when you were not able to respond, and another member provided you with that time to respond. So I'm sure that will happen again. Mr. Perkins... May I ask a question? To me, you may. Chair, when I, statements that are incorrect, that are false, that are part of the question, well, you will have an opportunity to respond. I'm, tr I'm trying to do my best. So, Mr. Drouin, go ahead. I have the utmost respect for my colleagues and for the chair, but you as the chair need to make sure that there are uh, there is a good flow of back and forth, but if there are statements that are false, then the witness has to be allowed an opportunity to respond to that. Uh, well, as I stated, this is Mr. Perkins' time. There's a conversation happening. It is going well. At times, people are cut off, yes. But uh, you will have an opportunity to respond. Whether it's 10 million, or whether it's 30 million, or whether it's 50 million, it's contrary to the act. You broke the act that you served on. The SDTC Act says you cannot personally benefit. When SDTC made investments in that uh, in your companies, while you were on the board, you broke the act. Did you not? No, it doesn't say in the act recuse. No, but the principles... No, but the principles of governance and ethics that we are taught when we sit on the board is to declare our stakes, our interests, and to recruit ourselves. And it's the same in all those other companies that have connections with the Canadian government or any other government in Canada. That is the practice. Public board and spending taxpayer money is to not vote and have a board you're sitting on give money to companies that you own, it, own interest in. Now, I will ask you again, um, when you joined the board in 2016, the value of Cycle Capital in its assets under management was a little over $140 million, and when you left it was $600 million. Seems like it was pretty good business for Cycle Capital to get money from SDTC where you're on the board and that you also utilized it to screen companies. First, your statement is confusing uh, asset under management. Are you talking about 
asset under management. Yes, in five years, there was probably very good performance. However, we are a private fund, not a public fund, but, and you are confusing two different, two different things, and I'm very surprised, Mr. Perkins. You know, these are the kinds of things that you should... Un so when, when uh, the culture of corruption on the board by Annette Pesherian uh, came on and changed, she, uh, there were nine directors, including your colleague Guillaume Met, who voted for money for himself. You, you had money given to your companies. Stephen Kukucher had money given to his companies. There is a culture of corruption that you are participating in, in approving not only your money, but the money to other board members. Isn't that correct? C'est complètement faux. That is absolutely false. And when Jim Balzilli... You didn't vote for Mr. Emet's companies. You didn't vote for your, you didn't vote for your faites, own because you left the room. Le lien que vous faites avec la corruption... The connection you are making with corruption is absolutely unacceptable, Mr. Perkins. It's false. Members that were appointed, whether they were liberals or separatists, were using this fund to... <laughs> were using this fund in a little cozy group to support each other's companies. That's exactly what happened. That's what the, the, the Auditor General found. If you had been a governor and council appointment, do you believe the ethics commissioner would have found you not guilty? Well, no. No, I don't think so, no. Not guilty or guilty of breaking the ethics laws of China? I believe that the ethics commissioner can reach the conclusions they want to reach. I'm not the commissioner. All I can say is that when I arrived at the board, I was told what was expected of me, how to comport myself. I have always followed those recommendations. And I went even further because I was declaring even potential conflicts, not actual conflicts. Out of 32 times, 28 were a potential. They weren't real conflicts of interest. You know, the Auditor General report lays out uh, mismanagement of conflicts and, and record keeping. And here we have here a very good example of just that, where you, you are articulating that you declared potential conflicts. That obviously was not adequately captured uh, in the processes such that here you have conservatives screaming about actual conflicts uh, and you went list by, you know, name of company by name of company by name of company and you're answering no to, to the vast majority of them. Uh, was there ever an instance, uh, apart from the, the uh, COVID approval, was there ever an instance where you approved funds uh, for a company that you had a stake in as a, as a board member? Or you didn't recuse yourself? Okay. La seule situation. The only situation would be the one that I covered in my opening statement, and this had to do with the COVID relief measures, because this was an omnibus. Mr. Chair, uh, thanks for uh, being with us today. Just some quick questions. You mentioned um, when you first joined the board, you were told how to comport yourself and what was expected of you. By who, please? Oui, alors il était. Who? Oui, il était recommandé que à chaque fois qu'on avait un intérêt réel et perçu, oh, de déclarer et de. When even we were told that we should. We. Start the translation. Okay, très bien. Allez-y, s'il vous plaît. Pas de problème. Go ahead. From the beginning. So. When you were part of the board, once you arrived at the board, there would be someone who would meet us and who would explain those expectations and the object. Oh, je me, je me souviens pas. Ça fait plus de dix ans. Mais... I'm sorry, I don't remember. That's more than ten years ago. But at the time, it was done. Sign any um, ethics uh, agreement? I don't remember. But what I can say is that if, had there been a document to sign, I would have signed it absolutely because I, I always sign what I'm supposed to sign. I don't, you know, I don't have a problem signing a document. The, the COVID emergency, it seems to be an excuse thrown out there for poor governance. Well, it was COVID, we were trying to prop up companies. Did you not sense a need to still follow the old governance rules, the old conflict rules? 
even though there was uh, the COVID issue going on. And the reason I ask, I'm like Mr. Canning's uh, relatively new to this study, and it just seems person after person is basically saying, well, it's okay, we wasted taxpayers' money. Perhaps money was taken by companies that shouldn't have been. Yeah, there was a lot of conflict, but it was COVID. We, we suspended our oversight rules. Why, why, if you're on the board, you're very experienced, why would you agree to basically throwing out governance rules to push through this omnibus spending, as you described it? The board members, including myself, asked questions about this, and you're... You, 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 it's not that we forgot anything, it's that we had a conversation. To ask, okay, you said you had a conversation, ask questions, but you were hired on the board, probably compensated, I assume, to provide oversight and governance. And yet, you had a conversation in you and the others just threw the oversight and governance and the rules out the, out the, out the door. I'm trying to, the, trying to grasp no. why. Alors, uh, je m'excuse, je vois pas. I'm sorry, I can't see your name, but what I would say is no, that's not what happened. We didn't just uh, set these rules aside. So the council, Van der Beek, and the members of the governance committee and the board, the board members had a broad conversation. There were indications that we could do what we were going to decide to do and that it was compliant with the rules because this was an omnibus resolution that wasn't penalizing, penalizing anyone. And you can laugh, but that's the kind of conversation that we had. I'm using that a group of board members, many conflicted, decide among themselves because it's an omnibus, so we're going to agree together to change the rules. Yep. And that's how I'm looking at it. There were rules before, and then an omnibus rules for the COVID spending. Am I wrong there? Non, je pense que vous avez tort. I think you are wrong. <laughs> because there were about 250 com companies that were reviewed over the five years I sat on the board. Four of those companies were Cycle Capital companies, and two did uh, receive money under the COVID relief measures, and that represented about $250 worth of interest. Now, I'm an engineer, not a lawyer. And can I just, can I just finish? Let Please me, ask, let me interrupt you there. No. You keep Mr. Chair, can I finish? Like, at what level is it okay, then, to say, wait, I, I'm, <laughs> I have ethics here, I cannot be involved in this? Whether it's one dollar or a million dollars, it's still on the list. I discovered this afterwards. Years later, I discovered this. That list wasn't, we, weren't, we didn't see that list when that discussion took place because it was an omnibus measure. Uh, uh, 20, 20 seconds, please be quick. A Canadian, we just heard there's over 2 million Canadians a month now accessing food banks. Any of them are watching will see connected insiders accessing taxpayers' money without any oversight. Do you, you, you mentioned about attack, Canadians are being attacked. Do you not sense that perhaps Cana Canadians sitting at home are going to be enraged over this issue? $400 million, taxpayers' money, while well, they're at food banks, going to connected insiders? Je voudrais surtout pas enlever quoi que ce soit. Well, of course, I don't want to take anything away from food banks. Listen, what you're saying is false. It's just simply false. This was an established program with criteria, and we complied with those criteria. We received advice. I wasn't appointed for governance. I was appointed to use my abilities as an engineer to review some of these files. And I sat there as an honest board member. That's all I can say. I can say that out of 23 companies on that AG's list, well, uh, there were 21 that... Uh, 
that did not receive money. And yes, two did. That's all I can say. That's all I can, I can only tell you the truth. Mr. Dwan, you have five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. And I'd like to thank Ms. Metot for being with us today. I'm sure that you have other issues to deal with besides the ones being brought forward to the, at this committee today. But I've said this before. I think we're spinning in circles. And once again, you're, you're seeing this. Uh, I don't understand this tactic on the other side of seeking people out. But I think it displays a lack of knowledge. Now, you have spoke about your experience. You received the Order of Quebec in 2018. You got uh, an Excellence Award by the Order of Engineers. You have been recognized uh, in the area of clean technology. So in terms of uh, les méthodes in Canada and Quebec, there aren't 100,000 people like you. I think they're rare. Inaudible for the interpreter. There weren't many at the time, but I would say that today there are many people like myself. There is an entire ecosystem out there. There are business people. There are people in finance. There are many people now who believe that they can develop a profitable uh, technological sector. Mr. Cooper, you have the floor for five minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Ms. Mateau, you have tabled with this committee a number of documents that we haven't had the opportunity to review that appear to contradict aspects of the findings of the Auditor General's report. Will you agree to, in addition to tabling those documents with this committee, to also turn those documents over to the RCMP? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, point of order. I have nothing to hide, but I don't know. Again, Mr. Two powers that are very well known in the Constitution. We're mixing judicial. If the RCMP wants documents from André Lise Metat, I know they can just get a search warrant very quickly if they feel so feel to do so. But this tactic, c'est du salissage. Encore une fois, c'est du salissage. It's just, uh, you know, dirty politics. Back to you, you've got four and a half minutes. The, the documents will be publicly available. Um, so whether the witness wants to turn them over or not, the RCMP is going to be able to, to review them through our committee. They are being tabled that we distributed to you all. They're publicly available, uh, I hope, this afternoon. You have the floor, Mr. Cooper, four and a half minutes. Well, I, I'd invite the witness to answer my question. I think I have put everything on the table here. I have nothing to do with this. I do not understand your question. I simply said, would you, you manage to table a bunch of documents with this committee? Will you also just hand them over to the RCMP? Yes or no? If there are questions, I'm happy to answer them. I have nothing to hide. Not, neither from you. Oui ou non? S'ils ont des questions, ça va me If they have questions for me, I'll be happy to answer them. So I ask if the answer is no. Um, point of order, so, Mr. Chair. Um, well, I, I asked if Weber... Point of order, Mr. Mr. I, I have, Jean Cotton point, point out, yes. Point of order. Go ahead, please. I, I have sat here and I have watched uh, the Conservatives go after our very esteemed witness, witness here. Mr. 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 Me, Mr. Cooper, Cooper, I'm going to hear Ms. Khalid's point of order. And yes, uh, further to, to my colleague, uh, Mr. Durand's point, it is very unfortunate that we're trying to interfere in the RCMP's investigation. If there is one, if the RCMP wants documents, I'm sure that they have many ways to reach out to the witness directly to get those documents. I would really appreciate if uh, Mr. Cooper can stick to what is the mandate thank, of our thank committee you. and not right. be irrelevant and not be thank you. and right. not right. be right. irrelevant. Ladies, ladies, Please do not ladies, talk over me, Mr. Cooper. Ladies, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, um, 
Miss Khalid, yes, yes. you have okay, done it quite de deliberately, Mr. Ms. Cooper. Miss Khalid, I'm going to turn things back over to Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper, why don't, why don't you move on to your uh, your question? You have just over three minutes oh, left. Question: I didn't hear a yes from Ms. Mateau. So moving on, uh, is it correct that you your Cycle Capital Companies, four of them, received $10.4 million from SDTC. Did I understand your testimony correctly? Je vous ai... I told you that I recused myself. Four companies got... I was the one to say... Questions. You do your best to provide an answer, and I'm simply seeking clarification that there were... Four cycle capital no, no, whoa, companies whoa, whoa, that whoa, received whoa. 10 Mr. Point Mr. Cooper, hold on a second. I'll give you the floor. No. Uh, as counsel, you're here to um, uh, work. Est-ce que ça marche, oui? Oh, no, okay, yes. You're here to. That's fine, okay. As long as. Pardon me? She wasn't subpoenaed to be here. No, I know she wasn't subpoenaed. No, I, I agree. And you're. Whoa. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, everyone, everyone, everyone calm down. Everyone calm down. Everyone, everyone, everyone calm down. You're here. You want to leave? Okay, Mr. 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 Cooper. Mr. 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 Say it outside. I won't say it outside. I would say it outside because I simply. I'm going to suspend this meeting for four minutes, Mr. Cooper. Cooper, back to you for three minutes, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And the, the time that we've had, I have confirmed that you did testify that $10.7 million, not $10.4 million, went to four cycle capital companies while you served on the board. I would draw your attention to Section 12 of the Canada Foundation for Sustainable Development Technology Act that states that no director shall profit or gain any income or acquire any property from the foundation or its activities. Isn't that precisely what happened when your cycle capital companies received $10.4 million from SDTC? Listen, I recused myself from those conversations. It's not 10.7, it's 10.4 million from four companies over five years. And I recused myself from those conversations to not be in the room. Uh, with the greatest of respect, I didn't accuse you of not recusing yourself. I simply cited a section of the SDTC Act that is very clear that no director shall profit or gain any income or acquire any property from the foundation or its activities, and yet four cycle capital companies received $10.4 million. I would submit that that is in violation of the Act. And don't take my word for it. I would cite paragraph 6.47 of the Auditor General's report that states for the duration of a director's term, a director buying or selling securities of an ultimate recipient or being compensated by or holding an investment in an ultimate recipient receiving funding risks not following Section 12.2 of the Act. Those are the findings of the Auditor General. So are you disputing the findings of the Auditor General? I followed the rules that I was given as a board member. I followed the, followed the rules to the letter. I'm an engineer, not a lawyer, and I did what I was told to do. If I was not appointed to the board, Jim Buzzley would have refused, had to refuse the appointment. Matat, did you read the act in the six years that you sat on the board? Did you bother to read the act? I was... Five years and a quarter on the board, and when I began, I read all the documentation, and the way things were managed is where I was asked to declare any conflict and recuse myself, just like any uh, company with ties to the government, and I followed the rules. Ms. Chip, you have the floor for five minutes as well. 
Um, I am disappointed and disgusted by uh, the conservatives' uh, behavior and uh, would ask that Mr. Cooper apologize. As such, I'd like to move uh, the following motion, that the committee call for the member for St. Albert Edmonton to apologize personally for his blatant def defamatory accusation against Ms. Meadow. Have, have you sent that to the, the clerk? I'm going to have a quick, quick ruling on this, which can be accepted or challenged. Uh, uh, Ms. Yip, I'm going to move, the, and hear my reasoning before the challenge, I'm going to move this out of order. You're welcome to bring it up at a later time. The reason is, if we go down this uh, if we go down this path, I'm probably going to excuse Ms. Madame Bitot, and we'll bring her back at another time. So I'm hoping we can deal with this. Uh, that's, that's, that, that, that's okay, Mr. Mr. Durant. I'll, 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 hear, your, I'll hear your reasoning. Um, uh, it's, I, I view it as, as something that is tangential and not a matter at, at hand. But Mr. Deering, go ahead, you have the floor. Mr. President, vous allez savoir. Mr. Chair, there are many precedents, and I'll ask you to examine those at the Official Languages Committee in recent months, but there are many precedents. Now, your party even presented a very similar motion regarding a witness. So you have said that, but there's inconsistency. And the clerk gave the opinion to the chair that the motion was in order, and there was a, almost a two-month debate. Now we're being told that the motion is out of order. I will challenge the Very chair. <laughs> uh, clerk, could you please call the other uh, roll call on this? And you might want to explain what, what the vote is yes, for. I so, will. yes. Of the chair, be sustained. Ms. Bradford? No. Monsieur Droin? No. Mr. Erskine Smith? No. Ms. Ms. Kellid? No. Ms. Yip? No. Mr. McCauley? Yes. Mr. Perkins? Yes. Madame St. Cloud de Gagny? Oui. Mr. Blaney? Ms. Blaney, sorry. My apologies. Oui, yes. I don't have a sub for uh, Mr. Nader. Four yeas, five nays. Uh, very good. The the uh, now have, is is the motion been sent in to the clerk? Yes, sir. It has been. If you would, I'll just suspend for two minutes. If I just have the witness just hold on for a little bit, uh, and the clerk will distribute. I'll come right back in two or three minutes. Them especially as they always be. In the meeting back into order. I'm going to turn to I'm bringing the meeting back into order. I'm going to turn to Miss Yip uh, to take the floor on your motion, please. That I have Mr. Perkins and Mr. Dedrian. Miss Yip, you have the floor. Um, so could you please give us a few minutes we'll see. Go around the room if, if you like in the meantime okay Ms. Yep. so the the motion is in response to the accusations that our witness Ms. Uh, Mitt is unwilling to cooperate with the RCMP. She has already stated that she is um, 
she is a, a cooperative and um, I don't see why she has to go through the RCMP and um, I think uh, Mr. Cooper should be apologizing for his tone and tenure of attacking the witness. And um, so I'm, we're waiting for you to apologize. Thank you. I have a speaking list that's ready to go. Thank you, Ms. Yip. Uh, Mr. Perkins, you have the floor, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move to adjourn this motion, the debate on this motion. I have a motion to adjourn debate on the motion. Could you call the question clerk? Shall the motion of Mr. Perkins be adopted? Ms. Bradford. It, it's to adjourn debate. It's to adjourn the debate on this motion. No. Monsieur Drain. No. Mr. Erskine Smith. No. Ms. Khalid. No. Ms. Yip. No. Mr. Cooper. Yes. Mr. McCauley. Yes. Mr. Perkins. Yes. Madame St. Clair de Gagny. Oui. Ms. Blaney. Yes. Five yes, five nays. Très bien. Je vais demander à Madame Mitta de. I'm going to ask Ms. Mitta to please take your seat. And now I would like to come back to Ms. Yip. Four and a half minutes, please. The floor is yours again, okay. Ms. Yip. Um, let me just see. Um, uh, so, um, Madame Mito, with all that's happened, I don't think that you were given really the opportunity to defend yourself. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? I believe that in my opening statement, I said everything that was important, and you will get that statement, and you also will get the detailed table. And that way, Mr. Perkins will get all of the detailed answers on the list. You also have the document on the uh, infrastructure bank that explains my conduct for each of the meetings. I know that Mr. Perkins was interested in that, and it's a pleasure to share that confidential information with you. In addition, I reiterate my desire and my interest to have an in-depth dialogue, including with my detractors, so that we can discuss the facts and do this on behalf of Canadian uh, entrepreneurs in new technologies. As MPs, you represent people, entrepreneurs, people who are trying to build their businesses, and it will always be in my best interest to continue to uh, assist them and advancing them, especially as they are, are uh, technological entrepreneurs. But I don't think that I'm to, here to defend myself. I have only the truth to tell, which is very simple. Uh, what have been the impacts of the continued conservative politicization of SDTC on the clean tech industry? It's difficult for me to tell you about the entire industry because I don't have an ongoing discussion with the entire industry on a daily basis. What I can tell you is there is a concern because SDTC is a program that's existed for numerous years and has helped advance things. So there is concern. I could tell you about the impact that these debates have had on me. It's really not easy to be attacked with lies. It is very difficult when you've built your reputation
years and you've done it with your heart and your family has sacrificed to be demolished by lies in the public arena. And seeing as I'm a person who truly believes that this dialogue needs to move forward, I extend my hand to Mr. Perkins. I often travel to Halifax. We have uh, businesses in your very lovely riding, and we're there to help, and I am here to help you, your entrepreneurs, to perform. And I will never hold you anything against you, Mr. Perkins, but you have kept me up many nights, and you have made me feel diminished. Uh, you, uh, uh, my spouse has never seen me in this state, but I remain here to help because I truly believe in what I do. I have dedicated my life to this cause. And it is not for political interests or tweets on X that I am going, you know, to drop this. As we say in my family, in my community in Bay Como, you know, th this will only kind of thing only makes you stronger. Mr. Perkins, you have the floor for five minutes, please. The Auditor General raised almost $400 million of funds that were either conflicted or spent outside the terms of the agreement. That's my concern on behalf of taxpayers. My concern, I'm sorry if it offends you, that by your own admission, you, uh, your companies received $10.4 million while you're on the board. But that's not my concern that you feel offended by it. My concern is that you clearly were in a conflict of interest. Now, I want to go in a, a, a different vein. On your time on the board, you, according to the lobbyist register, you lobbied government 51 times. Now, I don't know if you were in the meetings. It's under your name. Um, between 2016 and 2021 for various aspects of STTC's needs. 47 times uh, on those registrations uh, prior to his election, Stephen Gibo is listed. Were you both doing the lobbying together or was Mr. Gibo doing it on his own? First, those meetings f followed all of the lobbying rules. And if you've read about them, it's because they were declared. And Stephen Guibault and I traveled across the country subsequent to a study done showing underfunding. Believe it or not, we met with politicians in Alberta. This was before Stephen Guibault was in politics. We traveled to Halifax, Ontario, Quebec, f federal. Could you please leave? I was very... But, uh well, so it's true. He was in lobbying 41 times, uh, 47 times. 11 with, were with the Prime Minister's office, including Mr. Butts. Two with Minister Baines. Actually, six times with future Minister Champagne. So it appears that you had a lot of high-level access in Ottawa to, uh, to those folks. You mentioned Mr. Guibault's interest uh, as some sort of compensation he lists it still that he has it on his public disclosure of conflict of interest. So uh, since the time that uh, you were on the board until recently, uh, the value of your company has gone up six times. So is it fair to say that Mr. Guibault's investments, whatever those are, has gone up six times? Okay. Uh Let's settle this very simply. Mr. Gibbo has a passive interest, and when he left, his interest ended, and the value is not increased. You are confusing asset management and values. Second point, Mr. Perkins, you were at the CRB when you granted employees at CRB when they managed funds the right to passive interest. And Mr. Gibbo got the exact same treatment as any advisor for any uh, a capital risk fund. ...of interest in 2023, which lists an interest in cycle capital, is incorrect that he made a false disclosure of conflict of interest? Monsieur, Monsieur Guy 
Mr. Gibo has to make those declarations, given that he had those interests as a kind of a performance bonus. So he has to declare that. It's his responsibility. He owns not what he used to own in some time before he was elected. Uh, it's what he currently owns, and he's still listed. Il a toujours, so I'll, I'll, I'll il a move on. Question, to answer your question, Mr. Perkins, he's always, you know, had what he says because we are the ones to provide him with the information each year, and it's reviewed by our. Declare it. I'll move on. Uh, how many investments, uh, and what's the value that Brookfield has made in your funds? Who? Brookfield. Brookfield Management. They were investors in our first fund, which underperformed c compared, compared to the current. On all your press releases as an industrial partner, what's an industrial partner? Les partenaires industri industrial partners, of which we have several, L'Oréal, Hydro-Québec, Alouette, Alcan, Brookfield, are corporate, private corporate businesses or public on the markets that decide to invest in investment funds. And they are uh, a financing partner when your funds. Um, in 2017. A very quick uh, no, I thought he, I thought he was. Uh, can I? May I? May I? May I? As time. Mr. Perkins, I come from the question. Then I'm going to go to Ms. Bradford. Mr. Perkins, I, I, I'm a short question. No preamble, please. In 2017, you made an investment with a Chinese state-owned enterprise. They're an investor with you, and you have an office in China. Are you following the Chinese National Security Act that requires those who operate in China to spy and steal technology? Point of order, Mr. Chair. As yes, much <laughs> as I, I, I have no idea what the heck the, that has to do with uh, SDTC, if uh, the member wants to put a motion forward to go after those, I'm sure we could, but I don't see how this relates to our study. Madame uh, I am not a Chinese spy. And I'm so sorry the stress this has caused you and your family. I know you were into committee, uh, into committee about a year ago, and here you are back again. And um, I hope people watching at home don't think that if they step forward to serve on a board of directors, that this could be their fate sometime down the line. Because I would I hate to think that that might be the case and preclude people from serving in this important work. So I just wanted to give you a chance to finish your answer to Mr. Perkins' questions that he cut you off on. So if you want to complete that answer that you would have said. Bon, alors je... Well, I'd like to repeat. We followed all the rules. I recused myself. I declared all of my real and potential conflicts of interest. It is in writing everywhere. I've added to what the Auditor General did. Mr. Perkins, I will reiterate that yes, we did have activities in China and we managed uh, Chinese money in China. We have withdrawn since. I have to say that the situation in China has greatly evolved in the last 10 years. And as an experienced business person, and just like any other one, we've, play, we've done business with many different players in the world, but our activities there have started. And I would like to reiterate, I am not a Chinese spy. I'm a woman, feminist, environmentalist, francophone, and I also believe in abortion. Mr. Erskine Smith, Mr. Colley, you have the floor for five minutes, please. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, I want to follow up on a question from Mr. Cooper that I don't think we got answered was if you had read the, um, the SDTC Act that lays out rules and guidance regarding conflict. I do not understand the question. Mr. Chairman. I, re I, I pause the, the clock for you to ask your question. Je m'excuse, monsieur. Sincèrement, je comprends pas. Quite sincerely, I do not understand the question. I asked you very specifically if you had read the SDTC Foundation Act that stated very clearly about prohibiting board members from receiving any 
financial gain or other gains. What was explained to me was that I had to recuse myself and declare my conflicts. Just asking, did you read that? It's been a long time, and generally I do read those things. And I have a, enough experience to uh, read the documents that I need to read as a board member. And if I had not been, you know, acceptable as a member of the board, I would expect that uh, ultimately the minister would have said that. General. And you agree with that? Il y a des points qui sont valides. There are points that are valid. There are points that merit examination. And as to the list of conflict of interest. If you say there are points that are valid, do you believe there's invalid vais... points? No. Ce que j'ai dit, c'est qu'il y a des points. No. I said there are points that are valid. And what, what I said is when I look at the list of conflicts of interest attributed to me, at the time of the votes... Th that analysis was not done, and that is why I prepared a table which will you, s you will see later, which settles that issue. I think the Auditor General... Co-founder of uh, uh, Eco... Uh, what is it called? Eco Fiscal, I think? Eco Fuel. Eco Fuel, Quebec. And another organization that I see received once, and you were co-founder with uh, Minister Guy No. I understand. C'est faux. No, that's wrong. I, I'm co-founder, but not with Mr. Guibault. Okay, laissez-moi laissez vous aider. Let me help you here. There's Ecotech Quebec, which is a not-for-profit in Quebec, and I'm co-founder with two entrepreneurs. Mr. Guibault is not there. Once uh, the Liberals came to power, the amount of money you received for that program multiplied by 350% or increased by 350%. One of the issue, or one of the notes I'm reading from the grants and contributions is the duty of the recipient to relocate or reallocate or redistribute the grant or contributions to third parties. Could you provide f for this committee who you redistributed or reallocated the $3 million? I don't need it right now, but could you provide in writing that? Je, je ne comprends pas le 3 million. I don't understand the 3 million. Who was the 3 million given to? But straight from the Treasury Board. Okay. Alors, Ecotech. 3.146, actually. Ecotech. So, Ecotech is a not for profit that I co funded with other entrepreneurs. Ecotech has a board of members. Butte or reallocate the monies that you received to third parties. Ecotech does not distribute money. It, and it has nothing to do with SDTC. Directly from the grants and contribution website published by Treasury Board is a duty of the recipient, yourself, to reallocate what? No. or redistribute. The grant or contribution to third no. parties. So no. So would you provide? No. So you're saying that no. This is right from their website. I was a founding member, volunteer, founding member of Ecotech Quebec. It's volunteer work. I understand some of our concern. We have the Auditor General pointing out lots of conflict. You have Treasury Board staying money that went to your foundation, which is supposed to be passed on to other groups that you're now saying. But no, Ce let me pas ma fondation. Please, la let fondation. Me it's not my foundation. When we are, rec Canadians are lining up at food banks at record amounts, difficulty getting by day to day. Pour tous les we have the Auditor tous les General reporting $400 Écoutez, million. Dollars. I think we're going to have to leave. Sit there at the table, but you're not allowed as part of your agreement to be here to be waving the off for questions. Thank you very much. Ma'am, do you understand the concerns expressed by taxpayers and myself? I'm the co-founder 
of a not-for-profit that belongs to its members. About this whole scandal? Ah, oh, non, je peux, dire, je peux dire que j'ai énormément de respect. I can say that I have lots of uh, respect. My parents paid taxes their entire lives and raised their children properly. You have before you somebody who has a great deal of respect for all Canadians and who feels uh, privileged to live in Canada in a democracy. You have the floor for five minutes. Uh, Mr. Erskine Smith appears to be. Is there a member who would like to fill in for Mr. Erskine Smith? No, he's not Smoyes. He's he's he's. Well, it is. Uh, all right, you've got uh, just under five minutes, Miss uh, Kaleen. I'll, um, I'll fill in until Mr. Erkin, Erskine Smith. Uh, <laughs> I am sure that he's attending question period uh, right now as we speak. Uh, I know that uh, Monsieur Durouin had a statement in uh, in question period, so I'm sure that uh, Nate is uh, is really paying attention uh, to to what uh, Mr. Erskine Smith, well, to what uh, Mr. Francois, Francis Durouin has to say. Uh, so I will, um, as I am the last questioner, I will ask uh, our esteemed uh, witness here today if she has, uh, she's obviously been in, uh, in this committee for a very, very long time, and thank you for, uh, for, for your time today. Is there anything that you would like to say to Canadians with respect to what we have discussed today, with respect to your role? Um, I, I give you the floor to, to help us understand why you think that you are here today and what, uh, what challenges you have had to face and what is your message for Canadians with respect to everything that uh, that you have heard today first I have a general comment on the fact that climate change is a reality it is going to deeply change our societies immigration will be different the water levels will rise forest fires, and Canadian entrepreneurs have solutions that can change our ways of consuming and polluting. And we have to believe in those Canadian entrepreneurs. We need to support them. And we have to have among them the best in the world. And I sincerely believe that if the discussion on SDTC, which is not easy, I mean, there are things that have been put into question. Parliamentarians have uh, paid attention to this, and I think we need to look in uh, towards the future. There is a, a worldwide race uh, technologically to combat climate change, and forthcoming years will be difficult. We're already seeing this. We've seen this in the, f the fires in Jasper, the uh, flooding uh, territories, uh, you know, being lost there already areas in Canada that are less uh, habitable. Same in the States. It's not just about the poor countries, but the rich countries do need to bring about solutions. And once we can, one thing we can do is clean tech entrepreneurship, and we need to focus on that. That said, if we need to improve the programs, be more demanding, I'm on side. I'm even on side with Mr. Perkins on that, because collectively we have to raise the bar. And I'm always available to answer those questions. I say it, it will be a pleasure to go to Halifax and show him the extraordinary companies in the Halifax area that are working very hard. Mr. Perkins, do you have a comment? I can listen to you. No, this is your time. Then. It would be my pleasure, and he should be proud of all of those companies in his riding. And I'm here for that. I have no other mission. I've raised all my kids. I won't tell you how many, because I think you'd pass out, Mr. Perkins. But all of my kids were raised with the values, honesty, fighting climate change, respect for women, respect for differences, contribute. People who do nothing never make mistakes. It's people who do do things that make mistakes. It comes with responsibility and accountable. And I'm here today to respond to that. And in spite of yourselves, you have an ally, Mr. Perkins. 
very much for, for that, uh, Madame. I just uh, want to say, you know, it's really interesting how the impact of what happens in Parliament uh, impacts business. But I, I do share the concern of parliamentarians in public accounts specifically about uh, how taxpayer dollars are used. And, uh, and with the transition now going forward, what are your thoughts about that? And what are, what are the implications that you think we should be looking for as parliamentarians with that respect? Alors, je vais me permettre de, de vous donner... Well, I'd like to share the results of an analysis we just conducted right now. We're looking at the oil sector, all of the sector also of advanced technologies. The cloud servers are more and more contributors to CO2 and with the industrial revolution we have before us, which is going to affect the Internet of Objects, microelectronics, the electrification of transport, we continue to produce CO2. We're going to have to be, you know, more creative. We can't just point the finger at only some industries because the transformation of our economy will give rise to more CO2. And be it a CO2 that's produced by microelectronics or uh, the chemical industry is still the same CO2 in the atmosphere. So we will have to raise our standards. We will need to understand that there are points that have never been touched that are now being touched. And I invite you all to openness and to a structured and rigorous contribution to be able to f further develop uh, technologies. It's all very well to have an electric car, but... It, you know, if it is based on coal or, you know, uh, oil and other, it's no longer electric. Thank you very much. If you have any other comments, Ms. Meto, you can send those in.